Hey guys, it's Doran here. I'm a co-founder and the head of product at FT. Today I want to answer a question we get quite often here, and that is, why are so many of the ultra premium domain names in the market pointed at FT? And what is the reason that you guys host so many of the world's most valuable portfolios on your sales platform? Well, there's actually multiple reasons for that. Uh, first of all, it's access to data. FT is the only platform that provides full and uh, complete access to customer data. Uh, it's our governance, uh, which basically means uh, operational staff within our company, including myself, does not have access to this data, your data. It's commission or I should really say the lack thereof, as FT is the only commission-free marketplace in the industry. And then last but not least, it's choice and customization. But today, I want to talk with you guys about the first one, access to data and how important this is for premium domain owners uh, to identify buyers uh, and have the upper hand in negotiations and therefore maximize the deal size. So whenever somebody submits an offer, uh, a price request, or even sends a message through your FT Powered Marketplace or the FT.com Marketplace, we provide all of the data we've been able to gather with you. So yesterday I actually recorded a video in which I thought it would be great to use free real life examples of inquiries I've received through my own personal domain name portfolio. These were all individuals that also opted in uh, for their data to be used because we, we have uh, a feature you can toggle on to specifically ask people for consent. So I thought it would be great to use these. But IP lawyer John Barryhill was very quick to point out on Twitter it wasn't exactly the most classy thing to do because I also, in a way, exposed some of these people because they pretended to be someone else while they were actually trying to buy my domain name for their uh, employers, which were all pretty large corporate entities. So I've decided to record a new video and don't use real life examples. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps I should send John an invoice for the extra work, but John might probably think he should send me an invoice for the free advice. Either way, let's dive into it and I'll show you uh, how important it is to have access to uh, as much data as possible whenever somebody inquires on one of your domain names. So when you receive an offer through FT, and this is platform wide, so it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, for sale landing page you use. We have many different ones at FT. If you have an FT powered marketplace or if the inquiry comes in through the FT.com marketplace, we will always uh, give you the name of the buyer, the email address of the buyer, the phone number of the buyer, and last but not least, the IP address, which means the location the potential buyer is at the moment they submit the offer. So you can pinpoint where in the world this person is based. Um, now let's, let's go through this. So this is an, uh, an, an offer I just submitted on one of my own domains. So this is not a real inquiry, uh, but it is an inquiry that, that's been through uh, the FT platform. So uh, any inquiry on the system will look exactly like this. So we'll give you the exact uh, timestamp of when the inquiry was submitted. There's a name. Now in this example, there's a first name and a last name. Of course, somebody might decide to only put in their first name or the name that is not their actual name. But the email address is verified. 
Now, this is optional at FT. You can switch this on or off. But if you switch it on, you know that the email address that's been used to submit the inquiry is 100% sure a working and active email address. Now, this is very important uh, information to have um, to find out who is behind an inquiry. Um, consent. You can ask people specifically uh, for their consent, meaning if you're based in the EU, there's a GDRP, um, you know, privacy uh, law. Uh, so we highly recommend to switch that on if you're based in the EU. All of these things are uh, your choice at FT, so you can either turn them on or off, depending on uh, what works best for your strategy. Of course, uh, we have a message as well. If the potential buyer adds a message, we will provide this information to you too. Quite often, there's uh, some useful information in there. Somebody might say, you know, we're a charity or we're a group of students. Um, but with the other data points, you can try and figure out if that's really the truth. Now, I'm going to give you some, uh, some examples. These are based on... Uh, on real inquiries I've, I've had, but I won't be showing you all the nitty gritty details. Uh, for example, earlier this year, I received an inquiry uh, and an offer uh, for a domain of mine called webgate.io. What I could tell from this inquiry uh, is that uh, the buyer only provided a first name. They used a free uh, email service a german email service and i could see from the ip address that they were based that he or she was based in munich uh, a german city so based on this information with a quick google search i could search for webgate the you know as a company name and um, i found a few uh, businesses on the first page of Google, including a um, service uh, that was operating on uh, um, a domain name that included the word Webgate, but it wasn't the exact match. Um, and that service was operated by a German company in Munich. Now, with that company name, I could easily go to LinkedIn and uh, within LinkedIn, you can search for um, all of the people who work for a certain company. And I quickly found the person there that used the same first name. And uh, it turned out he uh, was a uh, buyer. So uh, he was a technical buyer and responsible for uh, purchasing uh, goods and services for the company. So, you know, even though he tried to hide his identity, with a quick uh, search on Google using LinkedIn, I was able to pinpoint who was behind the inquiry. And that is how you um, can use the combination of the name and the IP address to find out uh, who it is. Another example is um, an inquiry I received for another domain of mine uh, called disruptive.co. I received an offer from uh, a lady that used her first and her last name, but a Gmail address and also said she was working on a small project. And for that reason, she was interested in buying the domain. But based on a um, quick Google search of just her first and her last name, plus the keyword disruptive, on the first page of Google was a LinkedIn profile of this very person who turned out to be working for a very large advertising company called Disruptive. So based on the name uh, and the location and the fact that they sent an offer for disruptive.co, quick Google search and brought up exactly who was behind the inquiry. Third and last example, uh, if you only have an email to go after, you know, you have a name, you have an IP, but that doesn't give you much hints. 
quite often the email address, even if it's a free email address or not a corporate email address, might have been used to register other domain names. So earlier in the year, I received an inquiry for blogparty.co and based on the email address that was used to submit the inquiry, I could go to Domain IQ or similar service and I did a reverse who is search on the email address. Now, when you do this, it will bring up all of the uh, domain names that are associated associated with this email. Now, here's an example for if you search for my personal email address, it will bring up, it will bring up a total of six associate domains. Now, when I did this with the email address that was used to submit the inquiry on blogparty.co, I saw that this person already owned blogparty.org. And when I uh, visited that website, there was a landing page on there uh, announcing a new blockchain platform that they were about to launch. Now, based on that information, it was really easy for me to see uh, who the founding team was behind the project. And if you go to uh, blogparty.co now, you can see uh, they use my domain name uh, for their uh, platform. So that was uh, based on the fact that I had their email address. I could very quickly find out uh, who they were and knowing who's behind an inquiry. Uh, that's exactly what you need when you go into negotiation if you want to maximize the deal size. Now, for me, my domain names, they're not ultra premium. Uh, but if you have high value domain names, you need access to all of the data before you go into a ne negotiation. So you can do your research, you can identify the buyer. And to do that, you need the IP address, you need the name, you s definitely need the email address and the phone number because otherwise there's no way uh, to, to be fully in charge of a negotiation. Now, I hope uh, this answers some of your questions. If you still want to know more, drop a comment or email us at ask at ft.com. And I'll be back soon with another video that dives into our governance and how our governance uh, is truly unique within the domain name industry. Um, see you next time.